Okay, so entropy is indeed conceptually viewed as being randomness or disorder. So, and we want to look at some processes. So, and look at the delta S for those different processes. So, and when I say processes, I don't mean a reaction necessary because we're going to talk about the phase changes. So, back in the day, you learned about phase changes. So, and when I turn a solid into a liquid, into a gas, so, or include on that list also a solid turning into a gas. For every single one of these, if we look at the entropy, we're going to see it's an increase. Now, in which of these phases of state is there the most disorder? Yeah. Gas, for sure. Atoms are moving really fast, so, and stuff like that. And for which of these three phases of state is there the least amount of disorder? Solid. So in most solids, you've got a, a nice, well-defined crystal structure. The atoms or molecules are in nice, fixed locations. They might move around just a little bit, vibrate a little bit. So, but they're in fixed locations, and there's not a lot of disorder associated with that. And so as you move from left to right here, from solid to liquid to gas, you get more and more disorder, more entropy. And so for all these processes, delta S is positive. So the change in entropy, it's an increase, so the change is positive. Now, if you guys recall, talked about this in 113 back in the day, are these endothermic or exothermic processes? Endothermic. They're endo. They require heat to actually happen. So notice, water doesn't boil itself. You've got to put it on the stove and give it a ton of heat to get it to boil, right? So in this case, that would mean what about delta H? Positive, positive. Endothermic means delta H is positive. So for these three processes, whether I melt something called fusion, whether I boil a liquid, also called vaporization, or whether straight from solid to gas sublimation, whether I do any of those three processes, delta H and delta S is positive. And we'll find out a little bit later that when delta H and delta S is positive, that process or reaction will only be spontaneous at elevated temperatures, at high temperatures. And we'll go back over that a little bit later. So if you look at the exact opposite processes, So in this case, liquid to solid, that's freezing or crystallization. Gas to liquid, that's condensation. Gas straight to solid, that's vapor deposition or just simply deposition. So since these are the exact reverse, anytime you reverse a process, delta H and delta S just change their sign around. And so in this case, all of these reactions are exothermic. And again, that's review from one, you know, your first semester of chemistry. So delta H is negative. And these all actually decrease the amount of disorder in the system as you go the other way. And again, a little bit later, very soon actually, we'll talk about how when delta H and delta S are both negative, that process or reaction is only spontaneous at low temperatures, below a certain threshold temperature. So we'll go through that in a little bit here. Cool. There's one other process that you're going to want to know. It's kind of a phase change, but typically, for most solids, and specifically ionic solids, when an ionic solid dissociates in water and becomes aqueous, so you end up getting an increase in entropy there as well. And so for that process, delta S is positive. So because as a solid, again, nice, well-defined, highly ordered crystal structure, but aqueous, for an ionic solid, those ions dissociate and are moving around throughout the solution and a lot more disorder associated with that. So this is another process that you should know has an increase in entropy. So now we've talked about phase changes, but even more important than phase changes, there is one steadfast rule that is the most important factor for determining if a reaction has an increase or decrease in entropy. And that deals with, anybody? Moles of what? Moles of gas. So solids have a little bit of entropy, liquids a little more, but gases have a lot more. And so because gases have so much more entropy than solids or liquids, you can usually gauge whether or not an overall reaction has an increase or decrease in entropy by just focusing on the moles of gas. If there's more moles of gas on the product side than the reactant side, that's an increase in entropy. But if there's less moles of gas on the product side than on the reactant side, that's going to be a decrease overall in entropy. That's the first thing you usually look for. If that doesn't fill, you know, clue you in right away, then look at your phase changes. 
So what's the first thing you want to check for to see if a reaction's got a positive or negative delta S? Moles of gas. So don't worry about the solids and liquids, just focus on the moles of gas. Cool. So if I had this reaction right here, if you call it's my favorite one for doing the Le Chatelier's principal example from, from the equilibrium chapter, delta S, would I expect to be positive, negative, or close to zero? Yeah, in this case, positive. Why? More moles of gas on the product side. I only got one mole of gas in the reactant side. I, don't, I just ignore the solids completely. Two moles of gas on the product side. That's an increase in moles of gas. That's an increase in entropy. Cool. There's one more thing about entropy. Now, here we talked about change in entropy, delta S. But separate from that, instead of talking about the change in entropy for a process, we can just talk about how much entropy a molecule has. So, and for a molecule, the more atoms and the more types of atoms that it has, the more entropy it has. And so we usually think of like, yeah, bigger molecules, because they have more atoms, usually have more entropy. And again, the more types of atoms, even more so. So the bigger the molecule, the more types of atoms, the more entropy that molecule has. Notice this is different, because we're not talking about like a change in entropy as a reaction happens. We're just talking about a certain amount of disorder or randomness that a particular molecule has. And the more complex the molecule, the more entropy it actually has.